Kansas foster children continue to spend nights sleeping in offices. It was one of the main practices the state was to end as part of a settlement agreement from a 2018 lawsuit. A report evaluating progress on reforming the state's foster care system says that's not the only place Kansas has missed the mark. Tonight, the attorneys and groups who filed that lawsuit gave their response. Sean Logging talks with them and a local foster parent about the changes that they say are needed. Sean? Mike, Rachel, this is the second report the state has received on its progress to meet the requirements of the settlement agreement. It shows the state is making progress in some areas last year, but in other areas, it remains the same or declined from the commitments in the 2021 report. The state's foster care system is overseen by the Kansas Department of Children and Families, but most of the services are provided through private providers contracted with the state. Foster care, just with how much we love kids. Uh, it just seemed like a really perfect spot to start. In these last seven years, Neva Benton and her wife have found their family. Three of their four kids have been adopted from foster care. Grow our family in a way that we know that not only are we able to help somebody else, but they're helping us. Their home continues to welcome foster children. While the kids are the joyous part of this, the system they have to work with, Neva says, is a mixed bag. We've had, you know, really great experiences with them, and we've had some that we just, you know, have had to really go to bat and had to fight for our kiddos and things that were happening when kiddos were brought into our home. A new report shows some of the progress and failures in reforming the state's foster care system. Last year, the state met four of the commitments laid out in the settlement of a 2018 lawsuit. Six of those were unfulfilled. One highlighted by those who filed the lawsuit is children continue to spend nights in offices. Not knowing where they're going to sleep at night where they will go the next day has an impact that simply cannot be conveyed by the numbers um, in this report. It's a practice the state is supposed to end, but last year it increased 54 percent from 2021, with 85 youth spending at least one night in an office. Mental health is another benchmark not met. Only 43 percent of children entering foster care were screened in a timely manner, and only 70 percent having their mental health needs met. The goal is 85 percent. Neva says one of the things that people can do is advocate for these improvements. Have things that they are supposed to be doing, and we need to be the ones on the front line saying, you need to do this. Because me as a foster parent, if I wasn't holding to the agreement that I made with the state, they would let me know. Another area where the state is not meeting its commitment is on a statewide data system. Currently, the providers operate on different platforms, which make it hard for the state to share, or to, makes it hard to share data with the state and foster parents. Well, Sean, we just heard from the attorneys and the groups, but what is the state saying? What are they responding to this with? Rachel, the state is pointing to improvements in placement stability, and there was an increase in the number of children receiving mental health services last year. On this office uh, stay side, the DCF says that they have seen a decrease about 50% so far this year on those nights spent in offices, and it is also working to create that statewide data system. Thank you, Sean. Sean, thanks.